Yor really deserved more screen time in this show. I feel like she was introduced as such a cool character, but she has hardly done anything major for the narrative. I am new to this show and I haven't read the manga, so maybe I'm judging her too soon. Either way, I'm going to tell you exactly why I feel she was irrelevant in this core because it's your boy the Hot Rods to here, and in this video, I'll be reviewing the anime known as Spy Family or Spy X Family, whatever you want to call it. Despite my issues with Yor, it was a fun series to watch. In this video, we'll be going through the five arcs one by one and discussing their strengths and their flaws. And at the end, I will be going more in depth about my problems with Yor. So without further ado, let's dive on in. The first arc is called the introduction arc, and like the name implies, this is the arc where we got introduced to the main characters, specifically to the main family unit that we would be following. We first got acquainted with Lloyd, and I doubt that's his real name. His code name is Twilight and he is a spy, so his true name is probably being hidden or maybe it doesn't even exist. He's a man of mystery, and even now at the point of making this video, there is still a lot I don't even know about him. I know that he's a spy for the organization known as Wise, and he wishes for world peace, but I don't know his origins. I I feel like that has to come up at some point since it seemed like his motivations are very important to the plot. We got little flashes here and there, but we definitely need more. Anya was introduced shortly after when Lloyd went to pick up a child from a shady orphanage. One thing that the whole internet and I realized once she was introduced was that she was very cute. Sure, there may be some people who didn't like her or people who needed to be put on FBI watch lists, but for the most part, I believe that she was a very likable character. She's a kid, but she's the only one who has an idea of what's happening since she can read mind. It was a very interesting choice to make her a psychic, and I think that the story is much better off for it. Because of her psychic abilities, it seemed as if she was the character who the audience was supposed to relate to the most. I said a little earlier that she's the only one who knows what's going on, so that inherently makes her easier to relate to compared to the other characters who are more or less just going with the flow. It's almost like she breaks the fourth wall with her ability because she is able to convey information to the audience that we otherwise wouldn't have known. The last big character introduced in this arc was none other than the Thorn Princess herself, Yor. She caught my interest right away as she was very similar to Lloyd in that they have huge, illegal, secret identities. Lloyd is a spy and Yor is an assassin. They both needed each other for their own secrets, which made them a perfect match for each other. I personally loved the proposal scene because not only was it super cool, it also set the tone for the rest of the series. Just seeing how Yor was oblivious to the actual situation with those gangsters let me know that this would be a much more comical series than I originally thought. That's good because if I took this show too seriously, I may have actually lost my mind when some of the other gags came later in this core. The premise of this show was very interesting to me right off the bat. I wasn't completely sure what I was getting myself into when I picked up this anime. All I knew was that it was called Spy Family and that it had a lot of hype surrounding it. I assumed that everyone in the family would be spies, kind of like spy kids, but I was completely wrong. The thing that made this family interesting was that everyone had their own goals and objectives. Lloyd wanted to complete Operation Strix, which required a family. Yor wanted to use her family to hide the fact that she was a deadly assassin, and Anya just wanted a family of her own. These intersecting goals made for an interesting show. However, I feel like we haven't really had the chance to explore your side of things that much. The admission interview arc gave me further insight as to what this anime would be about. It is very similar to a slice of life anime because we see the protagonist act as a regular family doing regular things like go on a family ooding. However, the twist was that while on the surface they look like a normal family, all of them, especially Twilight, have secrets that make them far from ordinary. And in my opinion, that just makes it so much more cooler than most other slice of life anime out there. So we get a nice balance between cool action scenes and normal everyday family scenes since they have to play the role of family 24-7, otherwise people will start to question them. Speaking of people questioning them, I kind of found that their decision to pretend to be a normal family was very inconsistent. During the family outing, a criminal took an old woman's purse and Yor immediately chased after him. Then Lloyd literally jumped on him in public and caused a spectacle. While I do like the mix of regular family stuff and cool spy stuff, I didn't like this as much because they were openly doing things that no other family would do. The only one who used their abilities in a discreet way was Anya when she used her mind reading abilities to track the criminal down. I'm not taking 
think that they shouldn't have tried to stop the criminal because that was very admirable of them. But I wish they were a bit more discreet about it. A spy's main function is to be unnoticed. So it would have been so much cooler if he was tailing the criminal for a while and then found a discreet way to either take him out or take the purse back without him even noticing. But instead we got this flashy takedown team which looked cool, but again, it just bothered me that no one was suspicious of this incident. The family outing was done in order to prepare the family for questions that they would be asked during the interview process for Eden Academy. The actual interview process was very interesting to say the least. I immediately got the impression that it was a very selective school, almost to a comedic degree. They were rejecting people based on how they walked in. Like I said, I think this was done for comedic purposes, but I also believe that this was done to increase the stakes. Since both Yor and Lloyd leave double lives, we knew that it would be easier for them to present themselves as perfect parents. However, with people watching their every move, it increased the likelihood of someone noticing small mistakes that could cost Lloyd the entire mission. So while it was definitely silly, it did increase my overall excitement and enjoyment of that part since I felt like there was something that could easily be lost. And not to mention, the selectiveness of this school was low-key foreshadowed when it was revealed that they required the applicant to have both parents show up with no exceptions. It was a very strict rule that implied that they wouldn't accept children if they come from households that they believe are lesser than, not even if that child had top grades. I really liked Henry Henderson's character. At first, I thought that he would be a very annoying perfectionist who would criticize the forgers on every little thing. And while he definitely did do that, he wasn't annoying because his reactions to everything was just hilarious. He was always in awe of the forger's elegance, and that was enough to make him a really funny character. Possibly even one of my favorite characters of this series, and I'm still not over him calling Lloyd his elegant boy. He was just very eccentric and it made me laugh a ton, but his comedy aside, I could also tell that he was a good man. He stood up for Anya when that one dude was asking a bunch of rude questions. So not only was he very funny, but he was very respectable. And this comes up again later in the series as well. Henry Henderson wasn't the only person who stood up for Anya. Both Lloyd and Yor were ready to fight that one guy that made her cry. This conveyed that some things were more important to them than accomplishing their missions. Attacking an interviewer who was also part of the admission committee would definitely reduce their chances of Anya getting into Eden Academy. That means Operation Strict would have failed and that the family would be broken up, which means that Yor would be in just as bad a situation as she was in previously. But despite that, these guys would risk everything because they wanted to protect Anya's feelings. The implication here is that they have formed a strong familial bond already despite the fact that both Lloyd and Yor already know that this was all fake. That part conveyed to me that sometimes family goes deeper than blood. Even though they all believe this family is fake, they also have an undeniable bond with each other. I guess this is what we would call a found family. They all needed each other for different reasons and they all found genuine companionship with each other. The last major thing that happened in this arc was the whole castle rescue thing that Anya got as a reward for getting into Eden Academy. While I was watching, I thought it was both very cute and very cringe, but in a good way. I laughed so much during that episode because the whole idea behind it was ridiculous. Spending Wise's resources to do something so trivial was just one of those things that did not make a ton of sense. But it did make me laugh quite a bit, so I was able to suspend my disbelief. Not to mention, this episode has some of the best animation of the entire series. Outside of the first episode, we haven't really gotten to see a lot of Twilight's missions and epic fight scenes, but the castle episode definitely delivered on that. Also, the OSCs that were playing were just fire. I rewatched some of the scenes specifically just to see the epic action and listen to the music. But the best part was probably seeing how happy and satisfied Anya was at the end. It was just super wholesome. The Eden's beginning arc was a fairly decent and fairly short arc. One of the first things that we learned was that Operation Strix was a bit more complicated than we were led to believe. At first, I thought that as soon as she got into the school, the mission would just take care of itself and they would be invited to social events like an open house or something where Lloyd would be able to interact with his target. However, Desmond is such a recluse that he only makes social appearances at events for Imperial Scholars. Therefore, Anya needed to become one in order to get into that social club. And the only way to do that would be to earn 8 Stella Stars, which are only given out to those who do exceptional acts. So it's not going to be a free ride to victory just because she got into Eden Academy. I like that it's a bit more complex because it indicates the family will have to stick around with each other for a much longer period of time. Also, not to mention, this means that there will be a bunch of fun and exciting adventures in the future. I do like that Lloyd came up with a backup plan as well, because training Anya to be an exceptional student may actually be an impossible task. His plan B was definitely more practical. However, he unfortunately couldn't control the interactions between Anya and Damien, and they ended up being rivals before the first day even started. But mission stuff aside, I actually really liked seeing Anya interact with her new classmates, especially with Becky and Damien. 
I thought it was really cool that she could make a friend so soon by following her mother's advice, and I thought it was really cool that she made her first rival the same way. And the punch that Anya threw was very exciting, but I was definitely on her side for that one. He was threatening to bully for the entire school year, and he was just being such a jerk. So I'm not gonna lie, when I saw him fly across the hall, I definitely cheered. When you think about it, it's almost like this family sometimes sabotages each other. It's mainly because of Yor's advice that Anya can't get in good with Damien, which Loki screwed up Lloyd's entire plan. But plan B isn't completely screwed up yet, despite what Lloyd and Anya may believe, because Damien definitely has a crush on her. It's quite comical that Lloyd didn't notice given that he's a spy, and therefore he should be a master of observation. But it definitely made sense that Anya couldn't tell. And after seeing Anya's apology scene, I kind of started to feel bad for Damien since he seemed to be unable to process his emotions. Also, in the picture on orientation, he was the only one there without a family. He seems to crave his family's approval, and it's just so hard to keep hating him after taking all of that into consideration. The next arc, the Secret Police arc, was probably the arc that the most focused on Yoro with the possible exception of the introduction arc. Except it wasn't really focused on her, but rather her little brother Yori, who just happened to be working for the Secret Police. I can't tell that his character was very hit or miss for a lot of people by the online reaction to him. I'm personally not the biggest fan of sister complexes, but I also don't hate them either. I guess you can say I'm indifferent to them, but I will admit that they definitely can get very weird, and I don't think that Yori is as bad as some of the others I've seen. Yori didn't bother me as much because it took a really long time for me to even recognize that he was a siscon. He just came off as a very overprotective brother, but it wasn't until the flashback that I realized he actually had romantic feelings for his sister. Since that was towards the end, his existence didn't really bother me that much. His introduction with the interrogation scene was amazing though. He showed a dark, murderous side of him that let me know that he was, in fact, Yor's brother. In this arc, we got some of Yor's backstory, which really interested me because her character had been very mysterious. She was an assassin ever since she was a child, and it seemed like she only became one in order to help provide for her brother, which is honestly kind of the most wholesome reason as to why anyone would become an assassin. I always thought that she just genuinely enjoyed killing, and maybe she actually does because she blushes whenever she thinks about it. There's definitely still a lot to learn about her character, but I'm happy that we at least know a little bit more about her now. The excuse that she used for not telling Yuri about her marriage was both unrealistic and hilarious. It was just so unexpected that it caught me by surprise, and the fact that it actually worked made me confused for a second. I almost forgot that this series was supposed to be comedic, and that there was plenty of unrealistic gags like this. So since he's a siscon, he was completely ignorant to his own sister's lies, despite the fact that he's also part of the secret police, and he deals with liars on a regular basis. It's anime logic, so it's beyond me. But I really liked that despite his ignorance to his sister's lies, he was still suspicious of their relationship. It added some stakes to this arc, because in order for Operation Strix to succeed, Succeed, no one could find out that the relationship was faked, especially not a member of the secret police, the enemy of Wise. I thought it was very cool to see how Lloyd handled the situation. He led the conversation into certain areas in order to confirm that he was a secret police officer, and he was able to analyze and come up with an action plan within milliseconds. He put on a charming act that was so good that even Yori couldn't help but to be impressed by him a little bit. While I do think he is a little weird, I do hope we get to see Yori again soon because he can make things a lot more interesting for the Forgers. What happened after their meeting was a little sad. Since Lloyd is a little paranoid, which to be fair, it's his job to be a spy, he couldn't completely trust Yor since she may be working with the secret police. It wouldn't be surprising since she has such a close contact there. Regardless, it was still sad to see that he didn't trust her as much due to his suspicions. Yor noticed that he was distancing himself from her a little bit, but she didn't know what was going on. She just thought that she was failing as a wife and a mother and I felt really bad for her. The amount of distrust in that episode made me feel like the family was breaking apart because it just didn't seem sustainable. The character who captured my emotion the most in this episode was definitely Anya because she was feeling just as depressed as I was. She told them that they needed to get along and by the end of the day, they figured it out. I liked that it was eventually resolved, but I was definitely concerned for the health of the family. Alright, it's now time to move on to the last arc of this core, the Stella Star arc. This arc was less focused than the previous ones, probably because it adapted some of the Spy Family side stories, but it was still enjoyable nevertheless. The whole premise of this arc is that Anya was trying to earn some Stella in order to move forward with Operation Strix, and watching her attempt to earn it led to some hilarious adventures. The first one being the Dodgeball Tournament. When I was watching the episode, it reminded me a lot of the Greed Island Dodgeball game from Hunter x Hunter because of how serious everyone was taking this. Not to mention, the powerful throws of Bill were very reminiscent of Razor. But in this game, there were actually references to other anime like Dragon Ball Z, 
it looked like Damien was on the planet Namek for a second and that he was catching a death ball thrown by Frieza. Dragon Ball is one of my favorite anime, so seeing that just made me so happy. During the game, Damien and Anya got a little closer, even though Damien would probably never admit it. He risked his life, or rather his opportunity to be MVP, just to keep her from getting out. I really liked how their relationship was developing, and this indicates that Plan B may still be an option. The game ended with Anya's special attack failing spectacularly, which is something I definitely did not expect. I thought she would be able to pull it off since Yor's other lessons for self-defense actually worked in her favor last time. Even though that dodgeball game didn't win her any Stella, she found another way to earn it and I really liked how she did that. It was a completely selfless act. She wasn't doing it for glory or a prize, she just genuinely wanted to save the boy who was drowning. To me, this conveys that the only way Anya will earn Stella is on her own merits. She's not going to get them by cheating or doing nice things in attempts to get them. It's probably going to be more unplanned incidents like this, and I can't wait to see it. I will say that I thought it was both cute and annoying when she got super uppity after getting her Stella. She is going to need to overcome her superiority complex in order to proceed with Operation Strix, because she won't be able to make friends nor earn Stella with that attitude. Although the Aquarium episode was a side story, it was still a really fun episode. I like that Lloyd had to take his family on another Audi in order to prove to the world, but mostly his neighbors, that his family is normal. And I like that this is the first time that I actually saw him struggling balancing family life and his work, although for him, his family life is work, so he just can't get a break. He's definitely been overloaded with work, and I felt really bad for him. So even though we may not have moved much further in the story, it was cool seeing this side of Lloyd. Not to mention the whole mission with the penguins and everything was just very entertaining to watch. I don't know if you've noticed, but in this review, I hardly really mention Yor outside of two arcs, maybe? While she has definitely had a presence in almost every episode, the unfortunate truth is that she didn't really have many big moments in this show. Like I said at the beginning, I may be judging too soon since this season isn't even over yet and there's a lot more story to tell. However, it still bothered me that her character wasn't really relevant enough for me to talk about. I thought Yor and Lloyd would have around the same amount of importance, but it seems like the anime puts more focus onto Lloyd, and I believe this may be because Operation Strix is where the plot's focus is. Yor was only a minor part of that plan because there needed to be two parents for the interview. Now most of the Operation's fate lies in the hands of Anya while Lloyd pulls some strings in the background. Since she wasn't really very active in this operation, I assumed that we would get some focus on her assassin work, but that was rarely ever talked about as well. It's mostly just brought up as a gag because Yor gets turned on by the thought of killing. Her assassination work could be interesting in and of itself, and I'm just disappointed that we didn't get any focus on that at all. We barely saw her go on one mission at the beginning, but that was about it. We don't even know who she's working for or what she meant when she said until my killing when Lloyd proposed because we don't even know anything about her. But again, this could just be because we are in the beginning phases of this show and we may get this all resolved as soon as the next core. I'm just noticing that Operation Strix seems to be the center of attention and that is inherently an operation where Yor doesn't have as much to do. Overall, I really did love this show. Despite my critiques, this review was mostly positive because this anime did so many things really well. I know that the second core is coming out in the fall and I can't wait to how the story moves on from there. I assume we'll be picking up from episode 11 where Anya asks for a dog as a prize for earning Stella. I'm sure I'll find myself enjoying fun spy family adventures when this anime continues. If you like this video, consider watching another one. I talk about a variety of different topics on this channel, so I hope to see you there. This has been the Hot Rodster. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.